Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. Well, today I'm going to quickly go over PVCs, or premature ventricular contractions. And um, before you start running away screaming that you're not in the mood to go into some type of big, long cardiac lecture, um, that's not what this is. This is Monday Minute, so it's really quick. And what I just want to really point out to you is just some of the differences when it comes to PVCs that you might be looking for in these wide, crazy-looking type of complexes, but it's not always necessarily the case. And just to maybe just kind of keep an eye out for these types of things. So let's just take a quick look of uh, some of the types of PVCs you might see in the field. Um, now, if you look at like A and you look at uh, C, let's say, they look pretty common type of PVCs that you might see. But B, you might not necessarily catch that as being a PVC. You might say, oh, that's just sort of an inverted type T wave or something. You might not really catch that if there's only one or two on a strip. And look at D. Even that, not too crazy, right? It's not really, really wide like A is or C or even B. And you might not catch that or recognize that as being a PVC. So you keep in mind that it's not always these great, gigantic, wide complexes like you might see in C or in A that are PVCs. And keep an eye out for those types of um, you know, different uh, shapes of PVCs. Of course, of course, we're talking about multifocal and and, uh, and uh, unifocal type of, of PVCs. So, of course, multifocal would be if you have different shapes and sizes of PVCs in one EKG strip, and unifocal is when the PVCs that you see all look to be the same. Here's a few more to look at, too. Again, these here, think about it. These aren't your crazy... Um, wide complex types of PVCs that you're going to see, right? They're a little bizarre. You can tell that they don't fit in with the normal uh, rhythm that the patient's having. But if you look at something, let's say, like G or um, let's say H, uh, there, they're wide, a little, a little weird looking, but you might not catch them as being PVCs. So, you know, maybe you've, you might have even seen these on a, on a rhythm strip and maybe they happen once and you write it off as being artifact or the patient uh, moving around or something like that. Um, but keep an eye out because if you do see one and you see another one that's similar to that, then it could, quite could be some PVCs that you're looking at, not necessarily some type of an artifact. And it might just lead you to on a path to think that might be there might be something else going on with a patient that keeps having these types of complexes showing up on the monitor. Okay, so don't write them off as just being a uh, abnormal, you know, an abnormality on the EKG due to artifact or patient movement. Um, it could be that they are PVCs. Okay, so again, they're not always these gigantic wide types of complexes. Yeah, they'll be abnormal, a little wider. Okay, like in like in these four here but not necessarily like we saw in the previous slide, like in C or A or uh, B, okay? Now, what are some of the patterns that we know? Well, you've got your bigeminy, which is one every every other normal complex. You'll get a PVC or, or a trigeminy where you'll have every third complex. You'll see that PVC. And then the quadgeminy, which is every fourth complex, you'll see that PVC and most of the time they'll when you see something like this the PVCs will probably be uh, unifocal they'll be the same type of uh, shape so three more in a row what is that well one PVC is just the PVC right but you start getting three or more in a row four in a row that can be considered in in most places they consider that a run of VTAC and it's something that you need to start looking a little bit more your patient and trying to figure out what might be going on with that patient to have them these runs of uh, of VTAC because you know runs of VTAC can definitely end up being just VTAC with no normal science rhythms and now you've got a critical patient on your hands. So think of that run of three PVCs and then some normal sinus and run of three PVCs. Think of that as a warning sign to you, okay, that something is evolving with the patient. So what about treatment? Well, I'm not going to go too much into treatment, guys. This is a quick uh, little overview here on Monday Minutes, but just think most of 
of our PVC treatment, a lot of it is finding out the cause and maybe finding out the patient's recent history, medication changes, um, nausea, vomiting, um, stress. Uh, some patients have PVCs regularly. You don't might not even know that. They might not know that. So a lot of times if the patient is asymptomatic and you just happen to note this on the monitor as part of your assessment, um, a lot of our times our treatment is just supportive. Maybe some oxygen, uh, the intravenous, and pretty much just monitoring them to the hospital. Other times you might want to be considering medications, you know, things like amiodarone, things like uh, lidocaine, uh, medications that are in our protocols right now to treat um, runs of ventricular tachycardia, um, you know, things like that. And it depends upon your protocol, um, how they want you to treat runs of VTAC. Uh, they might want you to go right to um, cardioversion. And all this, of course, is going to depend upon your protocols and medications that are available to you, um, whether or not they've been proven or not proven. Um, but they, you know, we have the medications that are available to us to tr attempt to try to correct these situations. And of course, those can depend upon your patient's presentation and how they are presenting to you. You know, as far as mental status, uh, cardiovascular status, all that crap, all that type of uh, stuff. Okay, so uh, again, I'm not going to go too much into treatment and individual types of medications and how to cardiovert and all that. Just a little quick overview here of some things that you should consider um, if it is uh, the PVCs are happening over and over again and uh, you get the runs run of VTAC. Um, so if you're not sure, of course, and you're seeing these on your monitor, give medical control and call and consult with them on what they think might be the best course of action for these patients. A lot of times it might just be supportive unless the patient's clinical appearance is different than you know, what is normal for that patient. So listen, you want some more EKG help? I mean, listen, this is just a quick Monday Minutes here. Um, there is a great resource over on the main website, the emsseo.com. Um, it's the ultimate EKG guide, and this is really a 100% online type of study and training resource for understanding uh, EKGs. You can master recognition with EKGs. It's got digital EKG guide, heart sounds, there's some video resources there, step-by-step how-to guide on reading EKG strips and all that. It doesn't go into 12 lead, but it goes into all the other basic EKG rhythms you're going to see, everything from normal sinus to uh, third-degree heart block to um, uh, bundle branch blocks and all that great stuff there. So go check it out. Um, there's a link below as well to make it easy for you. But here is the actual link. You can go ahead and type into your browser and go check out all about the your ultimate EKG guide there. In addition, at the main site too at emsseo.com, there's a bunch of other resources there too on EKG reading and help. In addition to that, 12 lead type resources also. So that's it for this uh, week's EMS office hours, guys, and Monday minutes. I hope you can maybe use these and maybe just kind of keep what I mentioned in mind the next time you start seeing a patient having some ab abnormal type of complexes being thrown and consider whether or not they are PVCs and consider, consider whether or not they are runs of, you know, three or more PVCs and consider the patient's presentation and what you can, should, or will do for that patient. Um, of course, always keep reassessing our patients and treat within our protocols and what's available to us and when in doubt of course call med control for a consult well that's it for this week guys i'm on the monday minutes i hope you can use them again and um we'll see you next week as always jim hoffman stay safe